Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so today we are starting another uh, new chapter chapter 9 of this book what we are following and it is basically uh, title of that chapter is chapter 9 title is uh, chapter 9 title is application colon international trade international trade so what we are doing here basically what we are doing basically same thing the kind of application of that measurement of social welfare uh, we, which we termed as surplus producer surplus consumer surplus and some of these two as social surplus which is generated through free market operation okay uh, within any society right and we have done in chapter 8 in our last lectures okay we have discussed that if you allow the market to operate freely, how much social welfare can be generated? vis a -vis, if government intervene into the market through uh, several mechanisms like quantity restriction like say uh, force to consume more than the market equilibrium quantities or uh, some rationing kind of thing. So, uh, not to allow the society to consume beyond the threshold level of the quantity or even to the price side uh, if government impose say some upper bound of the or upper limit kind of uh, on the price which is called say uh, price ceiling or lower limit called price floor or if government in, uh, impose some tax on that commodity right. All this so many alternatives we have discussed and at the end we have demonstrated uh, diagrammatically using our proper economic logic with diagram, we have we have established that whenever government is going to government or any society what is the authority, who is the authority then usually in most of the countries it is government. When government is intervening into the market through those kinds of weapons, those kind of channels, every time government is basically distorting the market. By distortion we are telling that or we are referring that actually government is or because of that kind of intervention, social welfare is going to reduce, it getting reduced. Okay. So, with all those things we have established that uh, not only market is a good way to allocate resources within a society, rather it is the desirable way to allocate resources uh, within a society. And uh, on, uh, if market is allowed to operate without any intervention from any third party like government right. Of course, we have clarified that when uh, in the presence of uh, say externality or market power okay, market uh, fails to deliver whatever uh, outcome or uh, efficient outcome which it is supposed to deliver and that time definitely government can intervene and improve the market outcome right. If that is not the case, it is always better. Uh, to allow market to operate freely without any intervention right through that only we can uh, or any society can attain the highest possible amount of surplus which is called uh, amount of social welfare that is going to be generated within a society through free transaction of customers and sellers okay in the market okay exactly that thing we will uh, apply here same kind of application we will do here but if the similar kind of intervention by a authority of a country uh, do okay within uh, international trade scenario how it can be okay international trade means say one country is not uh, participating uh, when it is not participating in international trade it is called closed economy closed economy in economics it is called closed economy. Closed economy means a country uh, is not participating in any international trade. Okay. 
and when the country is participating in some international trade through two channels either export or import ok. Export means when a country is selling its product or domestically produced product are sold outside the geographical boundary of that country that is called export. Okay. Alternatively, when a country is purchasing commodities, goods and services okay, from outside the country, outside the domestic uh, boundary of that country and why it is purchasing? Perhaps uh, people of that country, people of that society wants to consume that, right. When country do that kind of work, uh, engage into international trade through that, that channel, it is called import import export I am sure these two terminologies is well known to all of you many times we have uh, we have discussed this import now we told that OPEC is a is a group of countries worldwide who that 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 group actually worldwide uh, or control uh, the supply of the petroleum products uh, for the entire world almost right. So, India yes India produce also produce some petrol products on its own, but say very negligible uh, fraction of whatever uh, India consume, India as a country as a whole whatever it consumes majorly it, uh, it imports, it purchases from outside mostly from these OPEC members right. Maybe some Middle East countries Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran kind of those kinds of countries right. Okay. So, import export these are very uh, well known to you people. So, uh, we are going to uh, see that when government is or when a country is involved in export import alternatively when a country we can tell that a country is uh, open economy kind of thing ok Ho which is engaged into international trade right. And that time whether uh, this country authority may be government of that country whether uh, to intervene into that international trade or not or by intervening whether that country can improve its social welfare ok what could be generated vis a vis if government do not intervene into international trade what kind of social welfare can be generated. So, that we will discuss. So, that is why it is called application same sort of application ok application of the social welfare ok amount of surplus consumer surplus and producer surplus are generated and all those things we will see that application, but in the international trade scenario we will see ok. In your book uh, there is a beautiful example or beautiful story kind of thing this chapter 9 is, is discussed there in a story form. A country's authority or maybe president of that country, uh, highest authority of that country is asking uh, to the say policy advisors or economic advisors uh, three question ok. First question is ok. So far our country is a closed economy, it is not participating in international trade. First question is you advise us, it is a group of economists you now, they are the economic advisors to the that say maybe to the president of that country ok. Uh, so, you first advise me whether we should uh, engage into international trade ok. In other words whether our closed economy we should uh, try to make it open economy. Okay, that is the first question. Okay. Second question, okay, so uh, if we open up, okay, who uh, which party from the from our, our country, okay, uh, consumers and uh, producers or uh, buyers and sellers to large group of uh, to largely to uh, group of uh, people in our society, okay. If we participate into international trade who of them is going to get benefited and who are going to get lose ok depending on the situation ok. And if we open up ok, should we impose any trade restriction? Uh, you people know that uh, when a country is uh, going to impose any restriction on international trade, usually it do not impose any restriction on export because what is the export? Export is our people or our domestic economy whatever we are producing that we are selling outside right and through that we will we will earn a foreign currency and all right. So, it is always encouraging to participate in international trade through export channel ok 
you if you usually you will see different uh, countries including India right. So, the industry which are largely which are engaged into export activities there are certain uh, usually government give some kind of incentive to export more and more right. But when it is import our, our domestic people or some, some organization, some business house they are importing commodities from outside okay, uh, with the hope of what? with the hope of whatever they are purchasing from outside they will be able to sell that within the domestic market right. The people in the country are there uh, who are the potential buyer of that product that is why they are importing right ok. So, usually when we are importing we have to pay money to the to the people from whom we are purchasing right. Uh, so, and when say suppose India is purchasing say some uh, say uh, some commodity say from United States of in, uh, America right USA right. So, obviously uh, suppose there, there is an uh, organization there is a business house in India say uh, they are uh, importing certain commodities from USA. So, they have to pay uh, uh, the, the seller of that product in the uh, who is the may be the USA citizen right. So, they, they have to pay in the dollar terms right they will accept only dollar. Okay, if we import from say United Kingdom, say England, right? We have to pay in terms of uh, pound sterling. Pound sterling is the currency of United States, uh, United Kingdom, England's uh, currency is uh, pound sterling, right? So in that way, uh, we have to spend that uh, foreign currency, right? So and import is basically our country's dependence on other country for some consumption, right? consumption of some commodity or some service right. So, usually can import or participation in import is discouraged perhaps ok by country authority right. So, uh, the question is three question whether we should open up our domestic boundary for international trade ok. So, far we are uh, a closed economy whether we should make our economy as open economy or not open economy or not that is the first question. Second question is if yes, if we make open economy right within the domestic or in our in our societal members ok, economic agents within our society ok, we can club them we are clubbing them largely to uh, two groups group of buyers and group of sellers ok or group of produ producers and group of consumers ok out of those two groups who are going to get benefited and who are going to get lo loss ok. That is the second question and third question when we are going to import if it is an importing kind of situation we have to import or we have to participate in international trade through import, importing some commodity from outside ok. Whether we should make any restriction we should impose any restriction on import or not you know that import restriction we can make into two ways import restriction import restriction a country can restrict its import ok in two ways two weapons one weapon is imposition of some tariff ok tariff is basically the taxes counterpart right when we uh, domestic economy you know we have discussed uh, government is going to impose some uh, impo, uh, impose some tax on a commodities transaction right. Exactly tariff is basically tax on the amount of import we are bringing from outside to our country right. So, maybe may per unit certain amount of tariff ok. So, one is the tariff and another weapon is quota. Quota means it is a quantity restriction right say may be uh, for a given time period may be one year within one year not more than that much quantity of that product what we are importing ok. We will not allow uh, anybody who is importing that commodity who means that that is the business house uh, who is the member of our society only right this country's society only right. So, we will not allow that importers uh, to import more than certain uh, limit say suppose uh, uh, Kia, Kia Motors, Kia Motors have you heard? This Kia Motors is basically one Japanese four wheeler company ok. They produce uh, that passenger vehicle four wheeler ok, small cars ok. 
okay so, and say suppose india is because demand for kiaj car is there in indian market indian uh, society we some of us wants to purchase kiaj car okay so some organization suppose is is importing uh, kia motors car okay to india with the hope of that they will sell that to our customers domestic customers right so government is telling that in a year you can't import more than 1000 uh, unit of car 1000 unit means 1000 piece 1000 piece of car you can't import more than that so what we are doing we are importing means that country is importing government is imposing some restriction not more than uh, this mass threshold level you can import right why government will do that because that four wheeler cars there are there may be some other companies who are the domestic companies they are also producing right if you if you purchase or import more and more right our domestic companies car will not be sold right so that is why okay so sometimes government uh, discourage import and these are the two weapons two channels through which government uh, try to discourage that import okay export to always ex encouraging so there is when a country is engaging into export uh, uh, exporting kind of business right so government is not putting any restriction so you can understand what are the three questions we are starting with whether we should open up our economy second eps which party of the domestic market is going to get better off and which party is going to get worse off and third if it is the import kind of situation then whether we should impose any restriction either through tariff or through quota so with these three questions president asked to that country's uh, economic advisor group of economic advisors okay and they are discussing they are analyzing economically using economic logic and all and they will answer at the end uh, president we should do this that that okay so let us try to get that answer using our whatever we have learned so far okay that consumer surplus producer surplus kind of uh, that kind of instrument or that kind of yeah that kind of instruments okay okay so suppose when this country was uh, closed it was uh, not uh, engaging into any international trade right so that time what is the domestic demand supply scenario let us see okay so suppose we are measuring quantity demand as usual quantity supplied in the horizontal axis price in the vertical axis this was the demand curve this is the supply curve domestically okay so within the country whatever commodity we are talking about that commodity is demand curve market demand curve entire market demand curve for the entire market the demand curve is say ad okay and supply curve is say uh, cs okay and o is the origin right so obviously you know that if this country uh, this market is allowed to operate freely what will be the equilibrium price so this will be the equilibrium price say op star amount O P star will be the equilibrium price, okay, and O Q star will be the equilibrium quantity, okay. Interpretation: O Q star amount of that commodity will be transacted in the market, and each unit of that commodity will be transacted at the price O P star level, right? And we know so E will be the equilibrium point, and we know that this A P star E, A P star E, this upper triangular area that will be the consumer surplus surplus generated by or enjoyed by the consumer as a group okay and this lower triangular area ce so this consumer surplus will be a p star e that kind of triangular area right and similarly producer surplus will be uh, c p star e that kind of triangular area so as a result a c e this triangular area will be the total surplus of uh, will be gen, uh, surplus that will be generated within the society okay and uh, th that is the uh, quantified amount of the social welfare what is generated through the market transaction of this particular commodity whose market we are talking about right that we know okay so a c e this is the total Uh, amount of welfare is generated within the society through that transaction of that market 
Now suppose, so we know that what is going to happen. So, this was the supply car, this was the demand car. Okay. So, domestic price level is O P star. Okay. I am not drawing that. Star. Now, when so this is the closed economy, if we allow the economy to operate closely or if we do not open up our economy for international trade. So, that much of A, C, E, this much of social welfare can be generated within the society okay, through that market transaction. Right? Now, suppose if we open up, okay, what will happen? We do not know that the commodity what we are talking about that commodity so many other countries also may produce. And as a result international market, international market means other than say suppose this country is India. So, other than India so many other countries are also producing, they are also trying to sell in their, their market, some other countries market and so on. right? So, international market whatever the price level we do not know, that price level may be either above our domestic equilibrium price level or below our domestic equilibrium price level out of these two. Uh, one of them will happen and it can be exactly at the our price level means O P star level international market price also uh, is the O P star level price. It can happen, but that is a rare possibility accidental matching kind of thing right. Our see one pen right that pen price in India okay, say 10 rupee per piece. It no it may not be the case that the same pen is priced in the Sri Lankan market also 10 rupee. USA market also 10 rupees and so on, right. Similarly, say it is a commodity, right, say, say rice, okay, rice say uh, 40 rupees per kg in Indian market. Same quality, same everything, same rice, and do you think that in other markets also the same price? No. India used to export basmati rice, no, to other countries. So, definitely those, con those countries, wherever India is exporting basmati rice, perhaps say their price is very high than the basmati rice price in India. That is why our producer who are producing that product, right? They are encouraged to sell there to get more price, right? So there is no reason that, or so we are ruling out the accidental matching possibility. What is that? The international price level and domestic price level is same. That we are ruling out. If that is not the case, suppose one case where domestic price level is below the international price level. Say so, suppose this is the domestic price level we know, but international price level is this red color that is international price level. Okay. Alternatively another case can happen the same thing uh, suppose this is say, as usual we are measuring price here, quantity demanded, quantity supplied here okay, and say CACR that is the supply car. A D is the demand curve, okay. this is Q star equilibrium quantity, this is P star equilibrium price, okay. this is the domestically equilibrium price, this is panel right panel, okay. what is the O P star that is the equilibrium price O Q star is the equilibrium quantity. So, this right panel and left panel are the same diagram domestically, but left panel we are considering that suppose the red line is the international price level say suppose O say O P 1 is the international price level that can happen. Alternatively what can happen international price level is the below equal domestic equilibrium price level say O P 2. Okay. So, if this is the case if this is the case when international price level is above our domestic price level, what will happen? What will be the equilibrium price in the domestic market even? If you think logically, you will understand that domestic market price also will rise to this P1 level, OP1 level. Why? Look, see when there was no chance that you can say when say domestic seller, seller of that commodity, right? They were when we were not participating in international trade, the equilibrium price level was O P star, and they were selling that uh, every unit of the product at O P star le price level to the domestic market. 
Now, when international trade is allowed, boundary is open up by the country, right? So, our seller they know that same product what they were producing, that price for that their product is OP1 in the international market. Why unnecessarily they will sell that product at OP star to the domestic market? Right? Say, suppose uh, say rice we are producing, right? So, rice it was uh, it was uh, sold earlier when Indian, India was a closed economy, India was not participating in international trade, price was say rupees 40 per kg. Okay? When uh, and India knows that Indian farmers knows that who are producing that rice, when we open up our border, okay, they know that the same rice price in Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, wherever we can, not Bangladesh, maybe Pakistan, wherever we can uh, sell our product outside, right? The price is 65 rupees per kg. Okay, so they will even locality, you know, I am a domestic uh, consumer. I was purchasing yesterday at rupees uh, 40 per kg. Today, when I will go to the market, no, they will tell them, no, no, sir, we can't no longer sell that in 40 rupees per kg. Why they will sell? Because they know that opportunity cost. What is opportunity cost? Because they know that that product is they can sell this product at rupees 65 per kg in Sri Lankan market or in say Pakistan market, right? So, they will not part. So, as a result, what will happen? Even domestic economy also equilibrium price will go up. Okay. So, uh, so, equilibrium price that will be at the international price level. Okay. Exactly here, what will be the equilibrium price? Even domestic equilib economy within the domestic economy, equilibrium price will be this only. Why? Look at the opposite scenario. Okay. When we are open, opening up and this is the international price level, say suppose say one commodity right, which international price level which, which price is way below than the domestic price level, what will happen? Okay. So, I am a domestic customer, I know that there is a Sri Lankan trader who is coming to India and who is selling the same product at OP2 level price, why unnecessarily I will go to my local shop and purchase that same product are paying OP star level. Okay. So, I will try it, I will tell no, no, I will pay only OP2, not OP star, because at OP2 level price that commodity is available, someone, someone is from outside they are, they are ready to uh, sell to me, right. So, through this logic does not matter whether international price level is above domestic price level or international price level is below domestic price level does not matter. Okay, that equilibrium price both in the international market in any case that is the price, domestic market equilibrium price also will match with the international price level. So, if this is the situation, even domestic market equilibrium price will be OP1, if this is the situation, even the domestic market equilibrium price level will be OP2. Okay. International level to in any case price is OP2 here and OP1 here. Okay. So, if that is the case, what will happen? Look at here. Earlier, our consumer surplus was this triangular area. Our means domestically consumer surplus what we could generate. Now, since price is way above, consumer surplus is reduced to this much area only. Okay. Earlier, producer surplus was this much this triangular area. Now, producer surplus is this bigger triangular area. Why? Look, and what, what is this distance stands for? Because at that price level, our producer who are the seller of that same product, who are producing that, that product domestically within our society this is their supply curve, this demand curve and this supply curve are the domestic economic supply curve, this demand curve, this supply curve is domestic economic supply curve. So, at that price level, our seller could sell until that much, okay. out of that, this much or this much, I can tell, 
this much are only domestic customers are purchasing. So, definitely this much is the amount of our export farmers or producers of India they could able to sell the commodity up to O say Q1 amount. Okay? But that much price level O P1 this is a very high price vis a vis O P star price. So, that much price in domestic consumer Indian customers a very negligible very small fraction of them can afford that high price. So, whose, whose ability to pay maximum willingness to pay is above that price level the, within this segment who are lying right. So, as a result they could generate this triangular area as the consumer surplus, but our sellers are selling until this OQ1 amount ok. Producer surplus will be this big triangular area ok. So, what will happen? Yes, if when this is so when international price level is above our domestic equilibrium price level closed market closed economy domestic uh, equilibrium price level right that time if we open up the country or open up the for the international market or on international trade what will happen this country can export commodity outside ok. How much export? This much will be the export because OQ1 is the uh, sale of our pro producer of that commodity out of that say OQ2 amount is the purchased by the our people only our customers only. So, remaining is purchased by the people from outside of this country. So, that is that is called export in ok. So, this much Q2 Q1 amount of export we could do ok. And since consumer surplus is getting reduced earlier consumer surplus was A P star E now consumer surplus is this much very small ok. So, consumer surplus is reduced by uh, this yellow bordered area that much consumer surplus is getting reduced ok. But producer surplus is increased by earlier producer surplus could be this. Now, producer surplus is this entire green this green border thing big triangle. So, producer surplus is actually increased by say this black colored border area this much. So, this much consumer surplus reduction and producer surplus increment is this. So, we are getting a net increment of this much surplus this 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 kind of area this ok this area this is the net increment. So, what is the lesson? Lesson is that when international price level is above the domestic equilibrium price level after opening up for the international trade market uh, opening up of the uh, our boundary uh, international uh, border for the international trade ok, we will be able to export our commodity to outside. As a result domestic customers as a group will lose their consumer surplus what they could generate earlier within domestically that will be reduced to a great extent ok. But con producer surplus will be increasing huge amount and that amount is actually that amount meeting up the loss in the consumer surplus and in addition to that some net uh, producer surplus gain will be there that is this area kind of this area is the net gain. So, what is happening consumers as a group are losing producers as a group are gaining and country as a whole is gaining because this much net gain is there. So, how much total surplus we are getting after the participation? This is the supply curve, this this kind of thing, this is the international price, this is the demand curve. So, total surplus of the society is this area, this big triangular area plus this small triangular area 
Okay. So, this this green bordered kind of area that is the net gain of the society of the country. So, when it is export possibilities by participating into international trade our country only will gain. Okay. Let us stop here and in the next lecture we will show if when the it is the import situation in the right panel situation it is an import situation that time what will happen. Okay. Let us uh, stop here. Thank you.